Hello everyone and welcome to this update video. I hope that you're all having a really great day thus far. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is currently going on out there in the tropics. But we're gonna be spending quite some time talking about the La Nina officially ending so yesterday Noah stated that it has ended so we're going to be looking at what is likely or possible from this upcoming hurricane season as a result of that happening and so before I go into details please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update Alrighty, and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on out there. Let's return to this uh, infrared satellite imagery here and we can see that there is some activity that is noted in the Caribbean. We see all of that drifting toward the east out to the tropical Atlantic and uh, that eastward direction is likely due to stronger upper level winds that's carrying all that activity. And actually there's a cold front that has been dipping in the Caribbean while dissipating. So we're going to be talking talking about the impact of that as well here so we can definitely see uh, all those clouds coming down from the north so that is in association with that front and we see some activity also in the vicinity of Venezuela and the ABC islands so there isn't anything too major going on within the Caribbean region at this time but uh, chances aren't negligible for shower activity especially across the eastern countries. And so uh, looking at this map here, so uh, this is a current surface analysis. And so we can see that there we have the cold front, that blue line with those triangles on it. So that is indicating uh, where that boundary is. And so this is for the significant wave height with wave direction. And with that cold front making its way uh, down into the Caribbean, it is also going to be resulting in some more significant wave heights and so we can see that as we head up the scale as we head toward the lighter blue the green yellow orange and red shades that is uh, increasing uh, height of waves whether in meters for those values at the top or feet with those values at the bottom so let's focus on feet here and so we can see that we have some of those lighter blue shades across uh, parts of the Bahamas, of course, and the northeastern Caribbean and potentially wave heights in excess of seven feet thereabouts. So that can result in those rough seas, of course, and it wouldn't really be the ideal time to go out fishing or swimming because when the waves are quite rough at sea, that can uh, pose danger to human life. And so now let us go ahead and talk about what is happening in terms of that ENSO region. So uh, there are warmer than normal sea surface temperatures over in the Eastern Pacific. And usually during a La Nina, what happens is that the trades continually blow from the east to the west. And so when they are stronger than normal, that helps to reduce the concentration of heat energy across the sea surface. And so that displaces all that activity toward the west. However, during an El Nino event, those trade winds are weaker, which results in uh, more concentration of all that heat energy in the eastern Pacific. And that in turn leads to quite a bit of activity over there in terms of especially the development of showers and thunderstorms, because as we know it, uh, that is all dependent on heat and moisture. So when we have a higher concentration over there, there's more activity activity within that basin. However, for the Atlantic, that means the activity over in the Pacific can help to increase the wind shear, as in those upper level winds coming from the west. Those uh, can likely increase and as a result, preventing tropical cyclones that might be developing from getting themselves together or intensifying. So that's typically contributes to a less active Atlantic hurricane season, however, a more active Eastern Pacific hurricane season. So that is the typical influence of El Nino and La Nina conditions. And so now stated that uh, neutral conditions are likely to persist uh, as we're going to be heading into the spring and the early summer. However, as we head later throughout the year, it is likely that an El Nino is going to develop, thus 
that's resulting in uh, less activity across the Atlantic Basin. And so less activity does not mean that there won't be any destructive storms. So it doesn't mean that this hurricane season is going to be a big sigh of relief. I mean, it could, but that is not something that is on the horizon right now where it is a sure fact that there is likely to be very little tropical cyclone activity. However, one thing that does influence tropical cyclones and where they go is the Bermuda High. So that is a high pressure system that exists across the uh, North Atlantic. And so this map here is really to depict how tropical cyclones tend to travel in the event of a stronger high pressure system or even if it is displaced a bit more toward the west. So typically if we have a high pressure system that is weaker sitting out there in the Atlantic, tropical cyclones usually uh, don't affect the Caribbean. They might just be fish storms, which means that they just stay out in sea and affect nowhere. However, in the event of a stronger high, we typically see storms being steered into the Caribbean before making a turn up into the Gulf of Mexico and toward the U.S. So that is usually the influence of a stronger high pressure system. And so as time goes by, though, we uh, will definitely have those predictions for the season coming from the various sources, uh, mainly for next month and going into May. And then mid-season predictions are going to be coming out uh, as the months go by as well. So that is something on the horizon. And uh, there are no certainties as of right now, so this is just what is possible for this hurricane season. And again, below average cyclones does not mean that there won't be any intense ones across the Atlantic Basin. But uh, other influences of an El Nino include more heat waves, and so that is usually a huge problem. So we can see that soar in global temperatures, and that can help to induce those heat waves. That is a very dangerous occurrence because it is dangerous to human health and especially in the elderly where heat strokes happen quite a lot whenever there are intense heat waves that might persist across a particular area. So it looks as though those are more probable this year and an overall increase in global temperatures as I said. So that is definitely something to uh, talk about more and more especially as we're going to be approaching these summer months and it is also important that you pay close attention to what is going on uh, in terms of any bulletins that might come out from your local weather agencies. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on all that is happening. And also, especially in terms of the Atlantic hurricane season this year. And so that is pretty much it for this update video. I hope that you guys found it to be quite informative. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And remember to always be weatherwise.